Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. In a reality where robots are everywhere and they become children's best friends, a little boy discovers that his robot is different from all the others. Today we will recap the story of the 2021 movie, Ron's Gone Wrong. A big tech company, called Bubble, launches its newest product aimed entirely at children and teenagers. Mark, the company's CEO, presents his new project, the BubbleBot. This device consists of a small robot that contains the friendship algorithm. In addition to becoming his user's best friend, his mission is also to help find other friends around the world. Ellie, a girl who was present in the audience during the launch, was chosen to get the first B-Bot. Mark uses all the information present on the girl's social media to help the robot get to know her. A few minutes later, the creature already knew everything about Ellie, including her favorite drawings and games. B-Bot has infinite skins and a wider range of functionality than a smartphone. Among them is the immersive 360-degree projector, which allows the user to enter a new universe. With all these advantages, it is easy to imagine that the B-Bot has become an object of desire among young people. Within a few months, every teenager had their own robot friend, except Barney. While going to school with his scooter, the boy sees his classmates having fun with their B-Bots. When passing in front of Bubbles' headquarters, the boy is amazed and, in a moment of distraction, almost ends up being run over by a truck that was carrying a new loading of friendship robots. The driver manages to break in time and Barney is unharmed, but one of the robots falls out of the truck and is damaged. The boy continues on his way to school and has to face another day being considered the weirdo at school. While some students were playing with their robots, the boy gets scared and ends up dropping some pamphlets from his backpack. Then Savannah appears and discovers that those flyers were actually invitations to Barney's birthday party. The boy tries to disguise and hides the invitations. His family is quite peculiar compared to his friend's family, so he didn't feel comfortable bringing anyone into his house. As she was late for class, Savannah decides to leave Barney alone. Before going to her class, she says goodbye to her B-Bot, leaving the creature on the shelf, alongside other robots. On the wall, there was only a vacant space, where Barney's robot friend should have been, however. The boy knew very well that his family couldn't afford to give him one of those toys. During recess, the boy even thinks on trying to fit in with his classmates, but gives up before even trying. His teacher, Miss Thomas, says that Donka, the boy's grandmother, called the school to inform them that it was Barney's birthday that day. Seeing that the young man was alone, she invites him to sit on the friendship bench and wait for some of his classmates to sit next to him. However, this only serves to make Barney even more uncomfortable and embarrassed. A few minutes later, at the teacher's request, some of his classmates approach to wish him a happy birthday. They say they found out about the boy's rock collection. Hearing this, Rich starts to make fun of Barney, making some totally unfunny jokes about rocks. The boy tries to ignore the bad jokes. At the end of class, he takes his scooter and goes home. As he is about to walk through the door, he is surprised by his grandmother's goat, who tries to steal his backpack. His father owns an export business and spends most of his day trying to prospect customers to sell his products. Due to overwork, he barely had time to devote to his son. When he gets home, his grandmother welcomes him with a wool cap, which causes the boy to be allergic, and his father gives him a set of hammers for Barney to play with his rocks. Even aware of his family's financial conditions, the young man still had hope that he would win a B-Bot for his birthday, but this only served to make him frustrated. In an attempt to cheer up the boy, Donka shows the feast she prepared so Barney could welcome his friends. In that instant, he remembers the disaster that happened on his sixth birthday. At the end of the party, his house was set on fire and his friends fled in despair. So Barney decides to be honest and reveals that he didn't invite anyone to his party. The doorbell rings and someone yells that it was a bubble delivery. At that time, the boy's hopes are renewed and he runs to open the door. Outside, a very large gift was waiting for him. Barney is extremely happy, believing he has finally won his robot friend, but when he opens the gift he discovers that it was just a giant rock. Suddenly, Rich and his colleagues show up and start filming Barney. That was just another joke. Seeing the sadness on his son's face, Graham decides to go to Bubble headquarters to buy one of those B-Bots for the boy. However, when they manage to get to the store, it is already the end of business hours and they are asked to come back the next day. With no hope of getting the birthday present Barney wanted, the man and his mother decide to leave. At that moment, Graham notices a truck arriving at the depot and hears the driver commenting on a B-Bot that fell off the truck during transport. So he sees an opportunity to buy Barney a B-Bot at a price well below what he would pay at the store. The next morning when he wakes up, the boy gets the big surprise. His father wishes him a happy belated birthday and delivers his new robot. Barney thanks them immensely, but when he tries to turn it on, he realizes that something is wrong. The robot starts to crack and only after a few minutes does it manage to get its new friend out. 
The creature gets up and asks the boy to connect it to the bubble network, but Barney doesn't know how to do that. Since that B-Bot wasn't legally marketed, it didn't have its friendship algorithm installed and didn't even know its user. The robot needs to select a username for the boy. As he only has names with the letter A in his database, he starts calling him Absalom. To access other names, it would need to be connected to the bubble network. Even knowing that his robot friend was not very normal, Barney decides to take him to school. He couldn't wait to show his new B-Bot to his colleagues. However, the creature darts in front of the boy and ends up being run over. Barney manages to get it out from under the truck and the robot's battery runs out as its solar power function has not been installed. After the incident, the boy changes his mind and decides to take the robot to school only the next day. As Barney heads to class, he asks B-Bot to stay in his room and learn as much about him as possible. When he returns home, Barney finds his room destroyed and the robot gone. Suddenly, he hears a noise coming from the kitchen and decides to go there to check what was going on. At that moment, he finds his grandmother dancing on the table along with her robot. The boy questions why that little robot destroyed his room and he says he now knows everything about Barney. The robot found that the boy's underwear combusts at 111 degrees Celsius, 9 degrees lower than the melting point of his asthma inhaler. After all these inconveniences, Barney comes to the conclusion that his B-Bot is faulty and decides to exchange it at the store. Along the way, the robot stops at a park, where it meets Rich and his friends. The boy gets angry with B-Bot and slaps him, however, the little robot takes revenge and retaliates with another slap. They start fighting and the robot goes after those delinquents. The other B-Bots call the local police, but Barney and his robot manage to escape before the car appears. The boy gets excited about his different friend and decides he won't trade him for any other. However, a police officer manages to find them and takes them directly to Bubble Headquarters. There, Barney discovers that his B-Bot does not have any registered users and his grandmother confesses that she bought that toy illegally. One of the vendors takes the creature to the shredder so it won't cause any more problems. Barney tries to explain that his robot was only trying to defend him, but no one listens to what the boy has to say. So Barney decides to go, personally, to save his friend. However, the seller realizes that they managed to escape and contacts Bree, the sales manager. Together, they search the entire store for the boy, until they find them hiding with other B-Bots. Bree asks them to come out of hiding and Barney, cornered, decides to give the woman his faulty robot. After the little robot is destroyed, the boy gets into the car while his grandmother argues with the policeman. At that moment, the boy takes his robot out of his backpack and says that he will teach him how to be his friend. B-Bot then introduces himself as Ron and the boy asks that, from now on, the little robot calls him Barney. When they get home, the boy takes Ron to the barn, where the robot will have his first lesson in how to be friends with him. After a few days of incessant lessons, Barney takes Ron for a walk in the mountains. As they sat admiring the view of the city, the boy reveals that his mother passed away when he was just two years old. Due to an oversight, Ron falls off the cliff and rolls all the way to Savannah's house. The girl was getting ready to do a live with her friend when, suddenly, the robot appears, grabs the lights and falls into the pool, causing a major short circuit. Barney arrives shortly thereafter and jumps into the water to save Ron. He apologizes for spoiling the scenario of Savannah's live and asks the girl not to tell anyone about his B-Bot, as he was such a big secret. Before the boy leaves, Savannah sends Ron a friend invite, but Barney explains that his robot is different from others and doesn't usually make friends. Hearing this, the girl is scared and claims that if a B-Bot doesn't make friends, he's useless, as that's his job. Ron is curious about this new discovery, he didn't know what his job was to bring Barney new friends. Still, the boy doesn't want to listen to his classmate. He takes Ron and goes home. The next morning, Andrew, the co-founder of Bubble, sees Savannah's video. Through it, the man and his team discover that the faulty robot was not destroyed and continues to cause trouble out there. If this continued, it could bring serious financial losses to the company, as its shares would go down. The man requests the location of Barney's B-Bot, however, his employees reveal that they cannot access it because the robot is not connected to the network. It was not even possible to access the boy's personal information as, unlike most of his classmates, he does not share his life on social media. At that moment, Mark appears. The young man discovers that another B-Bot was destroyed in place of the one that was bugged and is intrigued by the spontaneity of that robot. Mark says that, during his adolescence, all he wanted most was a friend to have fun with, just like Barney and Ron. His desire, now, is to find that B-Bot and find out how he managed to circumvent his programming. Meanwhile, Barney goes to school. Minutes later, Ron comes out of hiding with a mission to find new friends for the boy. To do this, he approaches all the people who cross his path on the street and asks if they want to be friends with Barney. In addition, 
The robot spreads hundreds of posters around the city, summoning people to become friends with the boy. After doing this, Ron goes to school. After spotting him, Barney finds an excuse to leave the room and runs after his robot. The recess bell rings and all students head out to find their bebots. Ron informs him that he has brought the boy some friends and soon he finds that he is in trouble. The students form a group and Barney goes there to find out what's going on. At this point, Ron introduces the boy to the new friends he has made for him. Among them was a crazy biker, a parrot and an old lady. As if that wasn't bad enough, the robot introduces him to another friend, a baby he had stolen while his mother was distracted. To make everything even worse, the bubble team arrives at the school and Barney is called to the principal's office. Rich asks Ron how he managed to hit him the other day, as B-Bots can't do any kind of violence. Then the robot reveals that it has no security controls and the boy asks his B-Bot to copy Ron's programming to delete his security controls as well. Thus, chaos ensues. On the way to the principal's office, Barney runs into Savannah and asks what's going on. The girl says that her post went viral and the bubble team went to talk to her. At that time, Barney discovers that the girl posted the video of the day Ron broke into her house. Savannah apologizes for revealing her classmate's secret, but claims that the urge to post that content was stronger than her. When he arrives at the principal's office, Bree is waiting for him and orders the boy to hand over her robot. Meanwhile, outside, the other B-Bots have freaked out and are doing everything their security system prevents them from doing. Savannah takes the opportunity to connect with bubble users around the world through a live stream, which is also watched by Mark and Andrew. Mark orders his team to update the software of all the robots and, during the transmission, Savannah ends up being swallowed by a giant ape, the result of the union of hundreds of B-Bots. The girl passes through the creature's body and ends up being expelled as if it were a poop. Savannah's video is shared by everyone at school and she becomes known as the Poop Girl. At this time, the update is finished and all B-Bots are turned off. After causing all that trouble, Barney ends up being expelled from school. While going to get his things from the closet, he finds Ron and decides to take him home, as he knows that at any moment the bubble team would find him and the robot would be destroyed. On the way, Barney claims that Ron is a dumb robot, as his job was just to fit in and he hadn't been able to even do that. Then Ron asks if the boy is his friend. Barney doesn't understand the question, after all, the B-Bot had been bought to serve him. At that time, the robot recalls one of the lessons Barney taught him. The boy wrote on his board that friendship is a two-way street. However, he wasn't acting like Ron's friend. Realizing the lack of reciprocity, the robot decides to leave and go its own way. Meanwhile, at Bubble Headquarters, employees are on the brink of madness. The buggy robot had yet to be found and the company's stock was down more than 50%. Mark doesn't know what to do to get around that problem and allows Andrew to take control of the situation. The man gets Barney's address through the school and sends his team there. When he gets home, the boy realizes that he is surrounded and hides in the barn. To his surprise, Ron was there too. B-Bot was packing and intended to return to the factory as Barney said he is a dumb robot. The boy apologizes to Ron and claims he is his friend. As they embrace, he hears his father approaching the barn and decides to run away with Ron. They run away on a scooter and end up being chased by the bubble people. Barney then catches Ron and they both hide in Savannah's backyard. The girl spots her colleague and asks what's going on, so Barney reveals that the bubble is looking for Ron and he needs to protect him. For this, he will hide in the forest. But before leaving, the boy asks why Savannah is crying and she tells him that from now on, she will always be known as the poop girl. Barney says he's sorry and asks that, at least this time, she doesn't reveal her secret. Andrew is still obsessed with finding the buggy robot, so he orders the staff to use the cameras and microphones of all the B-Bots and look for any information that has ties to the boy. The team does not agree with this, as they would be spying on the young people. However, Andrew was the one in charge at the time, so his orders had to be followed. Back in the woods, Barney and Ron were having fun like good friends. Despite not knowing what to do or how he would survive in that place, the boy was happy to have his robot by his side. During the night, they find a hut to shelter and rest, as they know that the next day they will have new challenges to face. That night, Barney's father and grandmother go to Savannah's house to ask if the girl has any idea where the boy could be. They were going to the house of all the boy's classmates, but none of them knew where he could have been hiding. Savannah also claims to know nothing. For once, she didn't want to falter with Barney. The next day, during recess, she calls Rich to talk and tells him that Barney has disappeared. The girl claims that, because of them, her classmate was alone in the forest. A storm is approaching and the boy needs to set up camp. Ron tries to convince him to come home, but Barney refuses to let him be destroyed. The robot has only 5% battery left, so the boy asks him to sleep to save energy. During the night, 
the bubble team detects Savannah's speech and sends some cameras into the woods in an attempt to locate the boy and his bee bot. When he realizes he's being wanted, Barney grabs Ron and runs away. It hides inside the trunk of a tree and manages to go unnoticed for a few minutes. A short time later, he needs to run away again and ends up falling off a small cliff. The young man runs out of breath and his asthma inhaler is no longer working. At that moment, Ron wakes up and sees the boy about to die. During recess the next morning, Savannah spots Ron approaching. The students rush towards her and discover that the robot saved Barney's life. Another bee bot calls the ambulance and, a few minutes later, the paramedics appear accompanied by the boy's family. Mark and Bree arrive next and try to take Ron away, but are stopped by Barney's classmates. A few hours later, the boy wakes up in the hospital and is supported by his grandmother and father. Soon after, Mark appears and informs him that he has fixed his robot. However, when the creature starts talking, Barney realizes that this is not the Ron he knows. Mark informs him that he has reinstalled the friendship algorithm in B-Bot and the boy asks him to make the robot go back to what it was before. Mark then tries to access the cloud, where he had saved the old version of Ron. However, his access was blocked. Mark doesn't understand what's going on, after all, he's the CEO of Bubble. At that time, the young man sees an ad from Andrew, in which the man says that the investors have decided to fire Mark and make him the new CEO. Hearing this, Barney stands up and asks Mark to take him to the cloud so he can find his friend. When they arrive at Bubble's headquarters, Graham takes his computer to the counter and asks one of the staff to take a look at it, as the device was not working. Meanwhile, Donka enters with her cleaning cart and has to go through the metal detector. The attendant connects the man's computer to the bubble network, causing a short circuit and allowing Barney's grandmother to pass through the detectors without any problems. When the woman arrives in a safe place, she asks everyone to come out of hiding, including her goat. They follow Mark to the server room and the animal bites one of the wires that would unlock all the doors in that building. Mark asks Barney and his grandmother to head to the cloud as he runs to the control room. Donka stays behind to throw off the staff and distract Andrew. At that time, one of the security guards appears and informs him that he found a goat biting the wiring. Meanwhile, Barney finally makes it to the cloud and walks across the room in search of his friend. Andrew finds Graham and asks where the boy who broke into his company's headquarters is. At that moment, the man realizes that the new CEO of Bubble was using the B-Bots to spy on the children. Andrew claims that he hates children, but is interrupted by an employee who reports that he has found someone inside the cloud. So Andrew orders all lights in that place to be turned off and security to be dispatched. The cloud's lights go out and the boy is almost giving up hope of finding his friend. When all the boy's efforts seem to have been in vain, a light begins to shine and Barney finds Ron's hard drive. Mark manages to turn the cloud back on and Barney inserts the hard drive into the B-Bot. At that time, the robot and the boy see Barney's classmates on the screen. They appear to be unhappy with their B-Bots and Ron asks Barney to connect him to the bubble network so that his programming will be shared with all the other bots. Mark helps them in this mission. However, when the process starts, Ron starts to fragment, so Mark cancels the update to prevent him from disappearing. Barney calls his friend to leave that place, but the robot claims that his job is to make friends. Therefore, Barney decides to support his B-Bot's decision and helps him break into the bubble network. Security arrives at the cloud and escorts the boy to the exit. Along with his father and grandmother, the boy leaves and Andrew rushes to his presentation as Bubble's new CEO. However, before he can make the announcement, Mark shows him some incriminating recordings, such as his declaration that he hates children, and the man returns him to the position of CEO of the company. Three months later, the B-Bots become an even bigger hit. Now they all own Ron's programming and have become true friends of their users. All robots adore Barney and this helped him make friends with his schoolmates. Now the boy doesn't need Ron anymore, as all robots have become an extension of his best friend. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.